All right, you guys. So this is the finished product. Yeah, just threw, threw it together. One that major. There's the fish. Nice and golden brown. Mac and cheese. And we have salad. Shalom. Shalom, y'all. What's your way that are just joining us I'm Shay and I am the wife mom sister auntie Gigi of our happy Hebrew family today I decided that I was going to stop in the middle of preparing dinner and show you guys what I'm working on um, I think the most requested or the highly sought after videos that we do are actually my cooking videos so I love interior design, I do DIYs and interior decorators, and you, you can call this a lifestyle channel with a twist. We are Hebrews, um, and we live a Hebrew lifestyle. Um, you might ask what that is, that is biblical. It's, it's straight out of the Bible. So whatever the Bible or the Torah, or as it's called in Hebrew, which, is, which means instructions, uh, whatever is in there is what we abide by. We try to walk it out daily. Um, but if you have any other, you know, if you have any questions or anything regarding that, please feel free to um, put it down in the description. I mean, not in the description. That's my job. Put it in the comment section and um, in our description. We have our email and you can email us um, if you have any questions or, you know, curiosities or so on and so forth but I digress today is just um, I just got off from work I came home and now I'm going to prepare a meal so right now I have a flounder that is thawing and under one running water I have that um, in the sink if you hear water behind you that's what that is and behind us I have a uh, elbows macaroni elbows boiling um which i'm going to make a quick uh, macaroni and cheese baked macaroni and cheese um now this is going to be quick and and to be quite honest with you i jumped right in coming home from work as you can probably see the clock says 6 45 it's a little fast um i try to have uh, meals made ahead of time but yesterday was kind of a go for yourself day so I'm getting ready to make a quick baked macaroni and cheese. Um, I don't even know that I have all the ingredients that I need to make the macaroni and cheese that I want to make, but I'm going to do what I do as a chef and I'm going to make it work. It's making a what's called a, a bechamel. Those of you that, that that cook know what bechamel is. It's basically a white sauce base um, where you make a roux with, out of uh, butter and uh, flour and I have some stock in here and I also have some heavy cream so I may have to make somewhat of a traditional not a southern not a soul food type of baked, uh, baked macaroni but more of a traditional one and then I'll have to put some love in it but you guys will see um like I said right now you have to excuse the background um right now I am just boiling the macaroni noodles just till they are al dente, which they are. 
don't want them to be too mushy because they're gonna get baked again. I'm basically filming by myself, so until I get all of my ingredients under control, I'll be talking to y'all out of the side of the camera, but it's all good. So I'm getting ready to go ahead and drain the cooking liquid off of this macaroni. Use my hot hands. Pour this out. Drain the macaroni. And I'll let that sit to the side. Fish is almost done going. And then since I've gone ahead and drained the macaroni noodles, I can go ahead and make my roux. So roux is basically equal parts, equal parts of fat, which is today I'm gonna use uh, unsalted butter. It's equal parts fat and starch. So equal parts butter and flour. So in this case, this is four ounces of butter so I'll do four ounces or half a cup of flour put this in there melt it down there's my flour all-purpose flour I use unbleached you can use whatever kind of flour you like. For me, I use unbleached flour. So, I don't feel like rummaging through the drawers right now. This is a quarter cup. I'm gonna put two quarter cups as a half a cup. So I'm gonna put two scoops of this flour in there with the butter, and then I'm gonna make a roux. And then I'll show you guys how I do my other fried flour. Please, look, y'all, you're getting a treat today because I don't normally measure. I'm really bad about that. So here, I, had, I turned the eye off from where I had the macaroni boiling, right? And as you can see, the residual heat is still melting the butter. See, so I'm gonna turn it on low. You don't wanna scorch the butter, you wanna Basically, melt the butter, right? And I'm rushing this a little bit, y'all, because like I said, I'm a little off schedule. I should have had dinner ready by now, but it's all good. So, as you can see here, see how it's melting together? And you get a nice golden color. And because I have it on low, I can basically cook the starch in this flour and make it the color roux that I want. Now here's, in this case, for this particular dish, I want a blonde, what's called a blonde roux, okay? So it'll be just a little bit darker than this. I don't know if the, the camera is picking up the color. So it'll be a little bit darker than that. And you want it to smell toasty. Okay, because what's happening is that starch is cooking out of the flour, that flour pasty taste, and then it'll be nothing but yummy goodness left. So that's what we have here. So that's gonna be the base of our sauce for the macaroni and cheese. So while this is kind of cooking down, you wanna stir it every now and then or ever so often. I have my pan prepared for my oven fried flounder. So basically I use corn flour and a little bit of a cornmeal mix. And I also put my own seasonings in it. So in this case, I have a little bit of adobo, some paprika, um, some herbs. You can do whatever mixture you like, as you can see. And basically what I do is I just sift all this together. Okay. You can use the Zatarans mix. Okay. You can use the Zatarain's mix if you want to. Sometimes it has a tendency to be a little bit too overly seasoned for my taste. It'd be a little bit too salty. 
And so I've, I've come to do my own mix. So, but again, this is corn flour, right? This is corn flour, which is um, the ingredient in the Zatarain's mix, right? So it's corn flour and your seasonings, okay? And you put that in there. So this is all you need to batter your fish with. The other part that you would need <clears throat> to um, oven fry your fish is you're gonna need oil because what you're gonna do is coat your fish in the oil and then roll it in the Zatarain's mixture or the corn flour mixture, okay? So Zatarain's makes a non-seasoned uh, fish fry. They make a non-seasoned, so you can use that and then just mix it with the cornmeal, how I do. So it's all types of mixtures that you can do. So this is your, your room. It's a little bit too loose. I want to add a little bit more flour to it because here's the thing. I want my, the base of my sauce to be very rich. Oh yeah, there it is. See, nice and rich. Now I'm gonna let that cook a little bit because I added more flour to it. So I don't, I wanna cook that flour out. I don't want my, my macaroni and cheese with, uh, base to be, um, I don't want it to be starchy tasted. So I'm going to grab my, now this is going to be a lot of, a little bit unconventional, but I'm using vegetable broth in this because usually when you're making a, when, usually when you make the white sauce base, you want to put like a, you could do a, a veal broth, I mean a stock, or you could do a chicken stock, or you could do a fish stock. In this case, because I'm doing, um, I'm doing the macaroni and cheese, and I want Jaden to be able to eat it, and he does not eat meat, right? I'm going to do a little bit of veggie stock. Now, it smells like a lot of different types of veggies. It's not like, it's not gonna taste like carrot, <laughs> macaroni and cheese, okay? This is just your cooking liquid. This is just for a base. I'm gonna season the mess out of it. And this is just the base. Because to this, I'm going to add some heavy cream. To this, I'm going to add cheese. To this, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, onion powder. And my secret ingredient that I use, that I'm going to have to turn the camera off. You see how creamy that is? Look at that. That's what you want. You can, add, you can use whatever cooking liquid you but if you want to make a seafood mac and cheese, you can make a smoked salmon mac and cheese. That would be out of this world, okay? But that's what I would advise. So this is onion powder, okay? No, I'm not gonna do an onion PK. No, I'm not gonna do cream and, and, and sweat it and all that. I'm not doing all that, okay? We don't have time for that anyway. Um, the thing that I will say about culinary school that taught me was how things work. You know, why things react the way that they do with certain foods, what you can do to, uh, what you can do to uh, do substitutions with, and all that kind of stuff, which is where we are today. Because let me tell you something. Had I not known that certain things work with certain things, I don't know what I would do on days like today where I honestly do not have the time to really do anything or prepare a long drawn out meal. Ha, found some. Let me tell you, Cab Farmer's Market's clutch. Little pinch. That's all you need. This is um, 
Indian nutmeg. I got it from the cat farmer's market. I wish you could smell this. So there you go, look, watch this. Here's the heavy cream. You can add more liquid into this because some of the starch off your macaroni and cheese and by the time the, some of the starch off the macaroni and by the time the cheese comes in this, by the time we add the cheese, it's gonna tighten up. You want it to be creamy but not stiff. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of sea salt in it. Just about a teaspoon. And then I'm gonna loosen it up a little bit more. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it. Here's my macaroni. I just added a little bit of water to that. Y'all know what it is. Don't act like y'all don't be rinsing the residue out of stuff. That, that, that spaghetti sauce jar. Like y'all don't be adding water to it, shaking it up and pouring it over in the sauce. Y'all know y'all be doing that. And keep in mind, you don't want to add too much sauce, too much salt to your base because you got to add cheese and cheese. See, that's perfect. You have to add cheese. And cheese has a tendency to add salt by itself. So if you put too much salt in your base, and then you don't, uh, and then you add the cheese, your macaroni and cheese is not going to come out right. Y'all got to excuse the kitchen. It look a hot mess in here. We getting ready to remodel this kitchen after we finish the back house and after we finish the boys bathroom the kitchen is next on the list so y'all bear with us and I know it look a hot mess it's not aesthetically pleasing at all but y'all blessed us with this house and we are grateful so anyway baby do a close up of this my baby's in here now y'all that's why y'all seeing all these angles see this there's that nice and creamy. You want to incorporate your macaroni elbows in there. Look at that. It's already creamy and we ain't even put no cheese in it yet. So what I'm going to do, I have a little bit of this Italian style cheese. This has Romano, Asiago, and Parmesan cheese. I told you it was going to be a little bit, I don't know if I said ratchet. But it's, it's, it's literally piecemeal together tonight, y'all, because when I tell y'all, I did not feel like going to the store. I felt like coming straight home, and I forgot that I didn't take anything out to cook for dinner. This is Kobe Jack. I'm going to do slices. So since I've already got my cream base and I added this um, Italian mix to this, and I could actually... I could actually loosen this up even even a little bit more. But you know what? I'm gonna pour a little bit more of this in there. Cause I'm gonna drop an egg over in there. And I think I'm gonna put a little bit of dry mustard in here. Yeah, there we go. That's what I want right there. Okay, here's the ground mustard here. Add that little twang. So that's probably like a quarter teaspoon I just put in there. That's all in there. So just to recap, this was our base. The base had your roux, your vegetable broth, a little bit of sea salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of nutmeg, so we got that all put together. Okay, we added the heavy cream. We added a little bit of extra water to it, to the consistency. So what you would really would really look for is for it to coat the back of the spoon. That's what you want. So after that, 
we added the, the macaroni to it, okay? You can adjust the seasonings as you taste it and see how you want it. Then I added that little bit of cheese in it, which that was probably like a quarter of a cup of cheese. You really don't need a lot in the base because you're going to cover it with this cheese, okay? And this is just a basic recipe. It This is not my, you know gourmet recipe this is just a thrown together hey Shay don't feel like cooking but I still want to feed my family recipe okay so for right now now this is done so now all I got to do is add an egg and then I'll put the cheese on top of it it's a matter it's tight right yeah baby's trying to uh, adjust the tripod but so as of right now I'm gonna set this to the side I got the oven preheated for 425 now if you were just doing oven fried flounder or oven fried fish in the oven you would want to do it for 450 uh, anywhere for 425 450 um, but in this case since I'm going to try to put the macaroni and cheese and the fish in there I'm going to do it for 425 okay so let me get my pan this is the pan with the oil in it let me move this cheese this is why I need to model. Because the kitchen's not really set up. The yeah, one way I want it to be. Um, so now I need to get my fish. Okay. So basically now my fish is thawed because I hadn't run, I had thawed under running water. Um but what I'm gonna do is take it out of the packaging. And then I'm going to dry it. I'm going to lay it on the paper towel. These are our coffee cups and my water. Here. Put that there. So basically. You're going to take choochie out the water? Yep. No, we're not, we not cooking choochie tonight. Choochie is Josh's beta fish. I think I should have. I was um. It's been a long week, y'all, for real. Nice white fish. This is biblically kosher fish. For any of you that's wondering, biblically kosher scales, fins, not bottom feeders. It ain't catfish. Bit on the thin side, but they'll work for what we need them to. And I love this because I got these from Walmart. Let me tell y'all something. It's two fish fillets in a pack, and there was eight packs in that bag. So basically, we got 16 pieces of fish. All right, first and foremost. Slide this on here. So, where's my? Oh, okay. Let's see. I have no room. I have no room. I have no room. Alright, so you see me dipping it in this oil, right? Oil in one pan, and I'm only doing it with one hand because I don't want to dirty up both my hands, okay? But basically, I'm, I'm flipping it, dipping it, flipping it, dipping it, and flipping it. Dipping it, flipping it. And I, I flip it a couple of times. I want to make sure it's nicely coated. Okay. I've already, when I say I've already uh, uh, put aluminum foil in this uh, pan here, and and then I sprayed it with the olive oil nonstick spray. Laying the fish in there. Okay. So that's basically all you have to do. So make sure that you coat your fish fillets very well. Y'all, this is a trigger of mine. A fun fact about me, I, I don't like to get my hands dirty. And I've, I've actually, I transplanted that trait onto my children. More specifically, Pat and uh, Josh, my first and my youngest. They hate getting their hands dirty. Like, you know, like cruddy stuff. Like, they have to immediately go and wash their hands. This, this is my, this is really a trigger for me, but... 
out. You make sure that you get it on all parts of the fish. Like in this case, this flounder, the the, uh, the fillets are thin, right? So sometimes it'll fold over uh, while, you, while you're doing it, but you just wanna make sure that you unfolding it and getting it and rubbing that that seasoned um, corn flour or you know whatever your mixture on on there. This is just a healthier way to eat it instead of deep frying it or whatever. Um, and I, <laughs> I don't like fried meat smells like in the house, y'all. Don't judge me, okay? But I cannot stand like fried meat smell. Like the house to smell like fried meat and oil. So this this is like the best of both worlds. It gives you the opportunity to have like a fried um, product, but not necessarily uh, the smell. I don't like that oil smell at all. They kind of left me. We had a little emergency in the bathroom with the plumbing. Um, so I'm getting ready to do the last few pieces. I'm gonna take this opportunity to wash the rest of my hands off. I'm not gonna wash them with the soap until I'm done dealing with the fish and then we can clean up our mess. Cause another thing that I like is to clean as I go. Um, that's what I'm used to doing. All right, so again, we're gonna put it on the paper towel. We're gonna separate them. So I'm on the side. Well, looks like we're gonna be remodeling that bathroom sooner than we thought. You're gonna have to run, baby. You gotta move faster than that. Move like I just told you that I'm taking you shopping. How about that? Okay, and what y'all hear in the background is us having a plumbing emergency. Uh <laughs> The valve came off. It was we already had a leak in the boys' bathroom, and so they went in there to try to tighten it so it could at least slow down the leak. And as a result, the whole valve came off. Yeah. So now we got to figure out what we're going to do. But meanwhile, I have to still keep cooking dinner because it don't stop. All right, I'm going to wash this in a minute. Okay, so we just got the water shut off. Hooray. I'm going to go ahead and finish setting up dinner. And then me and babe got to go to Lowe's. <laughs> Y'all, we could not make this stuff up. I'm trying to tell you. Couldn't make it up. But here's the thing. There's no sense in getting upset because guess what? It happens. And you have to. It's not. It's not what happens. It's how you react. You know? And I'm grateful. Because we, oh, the one we run the loads and we know just what to do to fix what we need. It's all good. I'm praising the most high y'all. He is worthy. And it's going to be all right. And I know y'all can hear my husband back in the background. Or maybe you can't talk to three million miles a minute. And frankly, I have enough. Of this corn flour mixture mixed up to where I won't have to do make any more because I honestly need to be done with this so I can run the loads with that. So, and usually in a situation like this, I would not crowd the fish because I don't want it to sweat. But in a situation like this, uh, I really don't care. It's gonna be edible. It's gonna be good. Um, and I'm not. I can't worry about it. I gotta get all this in one pan because we don't we're not gonna have enough room in the oven for me to do two three pans. Okay. So here we go. Just 
stuff happens. Can't get upset about it. You just gotta keep it moving. Okay, so I got the, the fish breaded. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'll probably just wash out another container and trim. Matter of fact, I could do it in this this um this container that I have, this glass uh, pan. I'm gonna just wash this out, spray it down, transfer the fish over into this, and then put it in the oven. Hopefully, I can make some room. So stand by, y'all. that the water is shut off. So, can't wash my hands, can't wash the pan out. Um, yeah. I'm gonna have to make one. Um, and then I'll put, I'm gonna spray a little bit of this olive oil on top of the fish so our our, our uh, skin, you know, the, the batter can get really nice and crispy. But all it is is olive oil. It's gonna be yum delicious. All right, so now I can put this in here. I'll put this one at the bottom. And then I'll go ahead and find a container that I can find a pan that I can put the um, macaroni and cheese in. Give me a second. Y'all freaking out. My hands is dirty. <laughs> That's what I get. That is exactly what I get for saying that I had that that's a trigger for me. Um, that's exactly what I get. Anyway, it is what it is. Let me see. spray this down. I'm going to be in the fair by and put this up. I'm going to start to tighten up some of them. Because the water, just we have to shut the water off, I mean, we can not clean as we go. At least keep it nice and organized. Kobe Jack. Put this on here. Just like so. Never a dull day. It's only going to be the time. We just can't call them. We just see them regular versions. All right, so. In our happy Hebrew family, y'all. Never go that. Y'all keeps us. I'm coming, baby. I'm almost done. Stop 
came out when you asked. You don't have, I had taken some cream cheese out, but I didn't need it. Cause I was going to incorporate cream cheese in my mac and cheese. So that would have been too rich for a night like tonight. We're just trying to get dinner done. So that's it. So that's dinner. So only thing we have to do is make sure that we have, um, we might have salad on the side or we might steam some vegetables real quick. That's, that's pretty much it y'all. Um, I just thought I'd share it. It was last minute full video today. Thank you so much. Oops. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, stay tuned because we got a lot more content coming. And we are apologize um, for the uh, <laughs> the unconventionalness, if that's a word, of this video. Um, it's real life. Stuff happens. And like I said, it ain't. What happens is how you deal with it. So, make sure you click the like button, tap the bell so you'll be notified every time we post a video. And, uh, yeah, just, you know, comment, share. And until next time, shalom, y'all. All right, you guys, so this is the finished product. Yeah, just threw, threw it together. One that major. There's the fish. Nice and golden brown. Mac and cheese. And we have salad. So once again, thank you for tuning in. May y'all bless you and keep you. Shalom.